Hello folks and welcome to Agents of Field. Well, it's late summer, it's August, and for many of us growers, it's been a bit of a funny season. In fact, in the last few weeks, all I seem to hear about is how bad the weather's been, how late everything is this season, and of course, that dreaded word, blight. But before I get to all that, why not take a quick nosy round and see what I've been up to. If you know anything about Agents of Field, then you know we like to grow organically. All our beds are peat free, there's no chemicals, and we like to work with nature, not against it. In fact, when I designed the kitchen garden, I put in an area called Bug Metropolis, and in there I've got a bug motel and plants that will help pollinators such as your butterflies, bees, hoverflies, and moths. And then in front of that, running all the way down here to my raspberries, is a strip of plants I put in every season of uh, nasturtiums. And I regard them as a sacrifice crop. And the idea being behind that is that they will attract the pests, such as a cabbage white butterfly, and they're allowed to lay their eggs, let the larvae hatch, the caterpillars form, and they will eat and decimate this crop. And that's great, that's what I want, because when they're doing that, they're not touching my brassicas. And it's working. So today, I'm going to plant out my winter veg and that's my brassicas and I'm hoping once they're netted they will remain pest free. Fingers crossed. I think it's time to come clean. I think we know each other well enough. Um, our growing season has been a mixed bag. We've had our ups and we've had our downs. Some things have germinated and grown really well. Some things have got leggy and tall and come to nothing. But despite all our successes and our few failures, the one thing that we have dreaded, and it's hit us for the first time ever, like so many of you that I'm hearing about, is blight. Take a look at this. If you've been following our journey this season, then you know of all the things in this kitchen garden, the one thing I'm most proud of is my greenhouse. And for the first time this season, I've grown a whole new batch of tomato varieties, things I've never grown before different colours, different shapes. So I've been really excited about growing tomatoes. I always am, but particularly this season. So like always, I've been feeding, I've been pruning, I've been sort of egging the tomatoes to swell up and they're just starting to turn a little red. So this morning, I was eager to get out here. It's the weekend, day off. I wanted to get in this greenhouse and check my tomatoes. Came in, opened the vent, opened the door and then my heart sank. Blight has kind of left its mark on my greenhouse, but I need to move forward. So it's, right now it's a search and rescue mission. I need to go in there, cut away all the infected leaves, and then hope there'll be enough time for the tomatoes to ripen and then I can get them out. If the tomatoes do get infected, then I'll rescue what I can and I'll bring them somewhere that's sunny, bright, and hopefully it'll give them enough time to ripen up. So that was filmed a few weeks ago, and since then, a lot has changed. We have tomatoes. We have healthy growing tomatoes and they taste great. Um, it worked, you know, we cut away most of the foliage. We try to create as much airflow as possible. And so far, touch wood, it's working. It's not perfect. We still get the old blighted tomato, but overall we have a successful crop and they continue to produce. But there's been a lesson learned here. We've never had blight before. And we are aware, like so many of you, that the world is changing. The world is getting warmer and we have to do what we can to not accept it, but work with it and combat it. So I'm already dreading next year and what blight may or may not bring, but I'm gonna be making a few changes around the greenhouse. I'm gonna try and create more airflow. I mean, this kitchen garden does have a microclimate, which is great for most of the time, but it does present its problems and blight is one of them. But for now, I am very grateful I have tomatoes. Right. Brassicas. If you'd watched our video back in July, then you would have seen me plant out our winter sprouting broccoli, our Brussels sprouts, and some rainbow crush candy kale. 
Anyway, since then, and obviously the blight incident, um, all our winter brassica veg have gone here as a temporary hold. So all the plants I grew in the greenhouse have come out so they can create more airflow for the tomatoes and they've gone in here. Anyway, they've grown so quickly and so fast and now I need to get them out and plant them up in some vacant beds. So let's get going. <laughs> some of the winter brassicas planted up. Now while I'm watering these, here's a few gardening jobs you could be doing right now. As we go into late summer, there's still time to make sow-ins for autumn pickings. As the soil is warm, seeds will quickly germinate. In the spare patch, I've sown another batch of beetroot. With watering, weeding and the right care, these will be harvested from autumn right up to Christmas. If you've grown sweet corn, then they could be about ready to harvest. To check if they're ripe, the tassels at the top should have turned brown. Peel back the husk and pierce a kernel. If the liquid is creamy, then you know they're good to eat. We all enjoy summer harvests, but to avoid gluts, pick crops such as courgettes regularly. Don't let them grow too big, or you may be eating them morning, noon and night. Finally, keep those summer blooms going right into autumn by deadheading. Otherwise, if left untouched, plants will be keen to set seed, shortening their flower season. So there you go, that is August done. Of course, if you want to get in touch with us through YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, smoke signals, please do, we would love to hear from you. But for now, have a great month, keep gardening, and I will see you soon. Bye bye.